G'day everybody, and uh, a rare treat for me, a special treat. We are looking at an aerial photograph of the Homebush Cane Farming District taken on the 2nd of August 1968 at quarter past 10 in the morning. And this was the uh, cane farming district my mum grew up in. Okay, we'll kick it off. I can't zoom in too much, otherwise it gets a bit too over-pixelated because the uh, photograph's resolution. Building in the top centre here is my where my uncle Frank and my auntie Elaine uh, resided for many years. This is the original old home. Uncle Frank actually bought this place when he was uh, still single and he was cane cutting. And I guess to gauge uh, uh, how much money you could earn in those days, he actually bought this place outright. It was uh, owned by Norman Harris. Now Norman Harris's family owned the farm Oh, just across from where Uncle Frank bought this house as old Bonnie Harris was Norman Harris's father, old Bonnie and Millie. But then Uncle Frank built the new house beside the, the old place. But uh, no, the gun, gun cane cutters in them days, they, they could uh, demand or command a fair bit of money for their services. Just up the road, I guess heading east on this photograph, on my left is where old Cedric and Marva Andrew resided for many years. And beside them is Jimmo Moschino, old Jimmo's farm. Just across from Jimmo's farm is where, they are, uh, where this group of trees is, is where the old Homebush Mission Hall is located. Now the old Homebush Mission Hall was originally uh, facilitated and uh, funded by Nils, I think his name Nils Peterson, he was an old farmer, and F.J. Stevens. I think I got, got his initials right. Now old Frank Stevens was a uh, farmer up near Sandiford. They are really original settlers of the area and they, I guess, they formed the old Mission Hall as a multi-denominational place to worship and for the, uh, what they call them, used to call themselves at the time, the, the Templars, who later become the Masons, I think, to assemble. But moving along Homebush Road, past Uncle Frank and Ali Elaine's joint, uh, on the corner here is uh, Jackie and June Takiaki's old farm. And actually, in this area, there was a group of old Japanese farmers that used to reside as well. Old Endo was pretty well known in the district as well, an old Japanese farmer. Just up on the hill here, on towards my, coming towards my left, is where my grandparents resided for many years, Stan and Eileen Choppy on Billy King's old farm. And beside them is Brian Rass's parents' old cane farm. And this is a rare treat for me, it really is, to see this old farm in 1968 still under cane. And you can see, I'll just slew over to the uh, left here, those indentations in the cane is what they call a lodging and it's generally there's a combination of factors they must have had a really bad heavy wet season in the early part of 1968 late 1967 and the cane actually uh, the, the stem is actually a lot thinner from a previous dry season and then when you get another good season you get that weak point in the cane and you get a really bad bloody uh, wet season it collapses on itself and that's what they call lodging my grandfather, Stan Choppy, also used to cut cane on Brian's parents' farm as well. You actually see when you look at this, a lot of these photos, and even on Brian's uh, family's old farm, see where the cane's been cut by hand with those stepped rows, and even on the bottom near the roadway in this other section. So 1968, uh, I guess the utilisation of mechanical cane harvesting wasn't exactly in full swing. A lot of the farmers were still cutting cane by hand. And a woman cane harvester too in 1968 was a big investment, much the same what it is today. Okay, moving down Homebush Road, we are heading towards Sandy Creek, the upper reaches. I should add too, my uh, grandparents too had, had lived at one stage near the banks of the Sandy Creek here in the upper reaches before they moved to Billy King's old farm, uh, what they used to call the tamarind tree. And an old, uh, I think it's Italian or Maltese, old Joe Tanti and a few other lads owned the land that they used to live on. But near the Homebush School, and that's this big expanse you can see there where my mouse is circling, my great 
auntie and uncle resided for many years, along with a few other South Islander families. Uh, auntie Kath and Uncle Alan Arrow. Well, Uncle Alan had a few nicknames, Gunner and the Hat, because of the style of hat he used to wear. But further along on the northern bank where Auntie Catherine used to live, and Auntie Catherine had a great old place with that lovely grove of mango trees. And going back in time in Auntie Cath's generation, there were still many old Kanakas, or the old boys as they used to call them in them days. They used to come down and see uh, Auntie Cath and Uncle Alan. And they used to, uh, Auntie Cath used to give them a meal. And when they finished a the meal, they used to leave a couple of pennies under Auntie Cath's plate. <laughs> Yeah, just moving along here, the, where the old Homebush Mill used to be, amongst his group of houses, the old CSR Mill. All what's left now is it's just a small fenced off compound. And there was a mill manager's house, there was a post office and bakery. And the bakery and the post office still existed well into the 1950s, 1960s, and this was run by the Walden family. Moving further along, along this headland, there's a railway line here, that you cross as you pass the post office and the old butcher shop come along this headland you come to where Albert and Lucy Thomas used to live there down near the banks of Sandy Creek that house is no longer standing anymore but they raised a family down there as well and this big cane block with this headland is now owned by the Zab family or Zab farming group but coming along the headland you have the areas known as Chapman's and the slaughter yard and I think he was, used to live down there. Old Reg and uh, Spot Bago used to live here. Old Spot was old. Oh, I got that wrong. Start again. Old Colleen and old Spot used to live here at one stage. And old Spot was Reg Bago. And uh, there's a few families actually living along here. And my great auntie Ada Marla. And I, she was Reg's sister. And I'll just slew across here further. Auntie Ada and uh, her uh, spot's other sister, Amy, married Willie Arrow, and they lived here in the vicinity of uh, uh, Turner's old farm, further down as you're coming to heading towards Ogan on the corner there. But I'll get back to where the slaughter yard. Another old character who used to live further along this headland was a bloke called Sandy Macaleo, and everybody used to call him Sandy Mac. <laughs> Old well, Sandy Mao ended up bloody uh, spending his final days at Baker's Creek across from where my uh, auntie and uncle lived, old uh, Fu and Rose Yassery. And had that bloody stutter. And he drove that little cream-coloured Morris Ute. <laughs> <laughs> but on this farm here, back uh, used to be old Bonnie and Millie Harris. And Millie Harris was a Matson before she married Bonnie. And ironically, many years later, I would work with their... Uh, great nephew Carl Franinovich because Millie's other brother old, who was old Georgie Matson, is Carl's grandfather. Great old, I never met old Bonnie Harris but a lot of people said he was a great old character and my great grandparents the Choppies actually lived on his farm down near the creek for many many years. But as you can see there's more evidence uh, looks like she's been burnt and they're getting ready to drop drop some rose there on uh, Zab's farm, Hal Madonna. But those step rows, just evidence of where they've been cutting by hand. And you can see again, evidence of cane lodging with these craters, the collapsed cane in the cane block. But old Bonnie Harris's farm too, that was taken over by Zab's and Zab's today and a large uh, percentage of this area through here. No worries, everybody. Thanks for listening, and it's great to uh, you know, step back in time, back 1968, and have a look at what was. No worries. Thanks for listening. <laughs>